can say and some things I can't say because um, obviously there's a big legal situation and a lot of stuff that's been reported, particularly by that website, is actually incorrect. So what I can tell you is that both fighters underwent extensive VADA testing and UCAD testing in the preparation at bout. Both fighters went into that bout fully cleared and licensed to fight by those people and by the British Boxing Border Control. There was a hearing for Dillian White prior to the fight where he was asked to provide information and he was cleared to fight. But that's what I can tell you. There'll be more information coming out tomorrow. That's important because there's like this big speculation that no one knew and it was brushed under the carpet. No, there was a procedure that was followed. I'm not a doping agency. I'm not a governing body or a commission. Once those people clear a fighter to take part, the fight's on. And there was a hearing to listen to evidence pertaining to that during that process and the result of that meant that the fight took place. Okay, question for you. Was the WBC notified about the inquiry? I don't know. That's a question for the British Boxing Board of Control. We don't notify people of uh, confidential information between a fighter, the governing body and the, the testing agency. In a, VADA, in a VADA environment, VADA report on their tests okay, to various different people. So for instance, VADA don't sanction fighters, they don't suspend fighters, they just report the information. Dillian White's entire VADA history completely clear in a preparation to the Revas fight. So all the reports that the WBC would have got is all of his cleared tests. UCAD do sanction fighters, they do suspend fighters, they do stop fighters from taking part. And they went through that process, they had an independent panel a, a hearing with Dillian White and he was cleared to take part in the fight. So whether the WBC were informed, that's a question for the British Boxing Board of Control. Now, a lot of people in the US are not familiar with the protocol in the UK. What is a therapeutic kind of a shield to cover up what, what guys are actually taking? Absolutely, I mean, that's not something, that's not a UK problem, that's a global problem. And what you should is be a speaking. A therapeutic exe a use exemption <laughs> is someone who takes a substance for an illness or something like that. I'm, again, I'm not a doping agency, so as far as I know on that situation, you would have to go to the governing body, i.e. VADA or someone like that, and you would have to provide all your medical history to say, this is something that I need to take. Might be an eczema cream, might be, I don't know, something like that. And the agency would have to approve that substance. That makes sense? All of these situations, you guys have to understand, the decisions are made by these people. Do you know what I mean? They're not made by me. I don't go in and say, yeah, it's fine, mate, take that. Don't worry, the fight's taking place. Just don't tell anyone. These things are dealt with by governing bodies and by agencies that are employed to make the decisions by the commissions. They're independent bodies. They're experts, they're physicians, they're doctors, they're scientists. So whatever decision was made around Dillian White was made by these people, not by me saying, yeah, forget about it. Let's just deal with it in a couple of weeks. That's important. In, in, in respect to the therapeutic use exemption, that's something you need to speak to Vada about, about the process of that happening. But again, it's not just you saying, oh, I need to take this, so is that all right? There's a process that has to be followed in order for that to happen. Okay, last thing, and I'll let you go. Uh, I feel like there's not enough transparency when it comes to performance enhancing drugs in the sport of boxing. What needs to change for it to get better? Um, I think we're making progress. I think still, I mean, I've, my comments, you know, I'm getting a bit of stick about this incident when I've been an advocate of VADA testing. We, we spend hundreds of thousands a year on VADA testing. Every major fight should carry VADA testing, not potentially get tested. No, 14, 16 weeks of constant VADA testing. That's important. And I've been an advocate of that. For me, if a fighter has intentionally cheated to gain a physical advantage in a fight, they should be banned for life. Unquestionable. There are incidents, and I know plenty of fighters that have failed a test where they've been sloppy or unlucky. Unfortunately, it's hard to have one rule for one and one rule for another, if that makes sense. Some incidents, won't name any names, heavyweights recently, who pulled out of Anthony Joshua fight, where it's so but it's just about three substances and not and, and the way they are ingested and the levels in them and stuff like that. So it can only be a cheat. Do you know what I mean? But there's no significant suspension. The WBA no, came out with a six but, months, but that's a slap the, on the wrist. The, the problem is, this is the good thing about UCAD. 
right? Which you'll learn as this case goes on. UCAD can sanction. UCAD, if if a fighter, say it could be Dillian White, is found guilty, he will be sanctioned by UCAD. The problem with VADA is they report. They do an amazing job, but they can't sanction. So the problem is with the Gerald Miller situation is who is going to sanction? Should be the commission. Exactly. But when he hasn't got a license, which he didn't have at the time, he can't have that license suspended. So now what will happen is Jarrell Miller just using, and I, I'm, I'm done with, with hitting on Jarrell Miller. Like, get on with his life. <laughs> like, I like the guy. Like, just, you know. But what I'm saying is, the commissions now, he will apply for a license in another commission. Right? Whether they, whether they pass him or not is up to that commission. You know? But really, there should That's be someone. Problem. I wish Varda could come out and say, you have done this, this, this. The length of ban that we impose is four years, two years, one year, whatever it is. But your bigger problem is, um, it, the bigger problem, sorry, is in America. Because at least in England, there is a, a body who, if a fighter has knowingly cheated and he's failed a test, they will sanction him and they will ban him. There's a case with Eric Molina. You won't know this. Eric Molina failed a test for the Anthony Joshua fight. I think he's still banned from taking part in the UK. Right? So at least they ban. So with the Dillian White situation, let it unplay, make your own judgment, and if they feel that he's cheated or he's taken a banned substance and this that, they will ban him. And they will ban him for years. Alright? Okay. But innocent till proven guilty, it's more these days guilty till proven innocence. But I want it's very important for you to know that a hearing took place regarding this incident prior to the bout. Do you know what I mean? Not Oh, there's the news. Okay, don't tell anyone. Let's just get a fight over line. Which no. has historically happened in the sport. Uh, not yeah, not not in my experience. Virtually years. impossible. Virtually impossible. Where a fighter has failed a drugs test and you can just sweep it under the carpet because it was very important in this situation that there was this hearing so that it could be dealt with by experts, not by you, not by me, who don't know what we're talking about, by experts. And he was Revis's team notified no, of this? No, because there's nothing to notify them with whilst there's a hearing taking place. If he failed if he failed, and they said, you're not allowed to fight, blah, 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 of course he would have been told. But what do you do? You go and say, just to let you know, there was an inquiry, uh, there was a hearing, and he's cleared to fight. Just wanted to let you know. Like... You can't, you know, you can't, that's going to be almost unfair to Rivas. You know, I understand the argument of letting a fighter know, but whilst, the, and by the way, the whole thing is confidential, whilst the fighter's getting the right to be heard. Say that Rivas um, is alerted to a problem and then tells everybody, tells the media, we're in the same situation we're in now, where everybody's accusing Dillian White without knowing the facts, you know? So then, then it's prejudice to the hearing. So that's why it's asked to be kept confidential. I don't mind telling you the truth. There was a hearing, an independent panel assessed it, and he was cleared. That's the truth. But I understand your argument, but I just feel that in a confidential situation like that, in a legal case, unless a fighter is uh, suspended to fight, unless he's uh, you know, banned to fight, then really you can't just prejudice the guy's pos position in a hearing. I feel like test results should be made public so but, there's transparency. Yeah. yeah, but they, I mean, VADA, when, when you do VADA, there's certain people on the email, right, of all the reports. So, for example, that fight, Revas against White, every time the fighter is tested, the reports of that test will go to me, the British Boxing Board of Control, Yvonne Michel, Team Oscar Rivas, uh, Dillian White, Oscar Rivas, the WBC, Right, that's the testing results. If it comes back positive, they don't say this has come back positive, the fight's off. They say that this has come back positive, it's over to you guys. Do you know what I mean? Look at Jarrell Miller in that situation. Varda reported that incident, they don't say he's failed all these tests, he's banned for four years. They say that we've done our job, we're reporting it to you. I almost don't like that because. In that incident, the New York Commission came on and said, you're banned. Or, or no, we won't license you, all right? But if they would have said, no, we've looked at this and we don't agree, we will license you, almost contractually, we have to fight. I guess. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. like, so in that incident with Rivas, contractually, if a fighter is cleared by everybody, 
I can't say, okay, the fight's not taking place. You know what I mean? Because contractually, I, I, I'm, I'm breaching, you know? So I have to make sure that we do things properly, that these people make the decisions and we follow the decisions of the governing body. And that's Has what we Dylan do. White said anything to you since yeah, he's this devastated. Happened? He's devastated because the same thing, he hasn't had a chance yet. All you've heard so far is one side of the story, right? So let, 